Hello everyone, welcome again to the mesostudy.com and in this session we are again taking the few important questions from the need biology and in this session we encounter the topic and the chapter name is structural organization in animals. This chapter is also from the 11th section. Let's start the session and discuss the important question from this chapter one by one. Let's discuss the first question from structural organization in animals animals that is first question is which bones of the body serve weight bearing functions here are four options option a bones of vertebral column b long bones of the legs c long bones of the arms and d both a and b when we discuss about the bones that generally focused or serve the bearing the body weight we know that weight of body we know that weight of body is carried by leg bones and these leg bones are involved in generally providing the function as propulsion and support they generally provide support to the body by lifting the weight of the body how they provide propulsion and support to the body because of the presence of femur so femur is the basic thing with the help of which they provide propulsion and support to the body because femur is generally articulated articulated with acetabulum with the acetabulum and these acetabulum is generally moving on the pelvic girdle pelvic girdle of the body when we discuss about the leg bones leg bones leg bones will work as the most extensible most extensible movable axis most extensible movable axis and that axis is generally move on the pelvic girdle pelvic girdle and these extensible movement are basically balanced and propelled at balanced and propelled at the hip joint so hip joint is act as the balanced and propelling organ of these extensible movable that are generally opted by the leg bones by providing the support to the body by lifting the weight so the right answer for the option on the question is long bones of legs long bones of the legs because of the presence of femur and that femur is articulated on the pelvic girdle and pelvic girdle movement is balanced at the hip joint that's why they generally provide and support to the body by lifting the weight of the body. So the right answer for the question is option B. That is long bones of the legs. This is the right one in this case. Let's move to the next question from the structural organization in animals. That is question number second. Pseudostratified epithelium lines. Here are four options. Option A, urethra and oviduct. B, trachea and male urethra. C, urinary bladder. D, endothelium. When we discuss about the pseudostratified epithelium, first we have to know what is pseudostratified epithelium what exactly this kind of epithelium is and what are the various role played by them first of all 
pseudo epithelium tissues that generally provide the pseudo stratified epithelium they generally act as a protective structure protective structure and these protective structure are found in places are found in places where involvement of mucus and mucus gets secreted and we all know that mucus secreting cells mucus secreting cells that are present in the body is named as goblet cells also known as a goblet cell when we discuss about the pseudo stratified epithelia pseudo stratified epithelia they are the more prevalent and are generally present in upper and upper and lower respiratory tract upper and lower respiratory tract and these tracts are of ciliated types all these tracts are lined by the cilia that's why it's known as a ciliated type next is non ciliated non ciliated pseudo stratified epithelia non ciliated pseudo stratified epithelium these kind of epithelium where cilia ducts and cilia lining are absent are present on or found in ducts of large glands mostly large glands ducts are non ciliated or non ciliated pseudo stratified epithelium are also present in male urethra in the male urethra but these will act as a or separated by the transition zone these transition zones are present between two epithelial zone what kind of two epithelial zone these two epithelial zones are first is the ciliated types first is ciliated and next is the non ciliated types and there is a transition zone present between the ciliated and non ciliated pseudo stratified epithelium that generally possess the cilia are present in the respiratory tract and uh, another types of pseudo stratified epithelium which are generally non ciliated and in which absence of cilia are present in ducts of large glands or male urethra so according to this the right answer of the question is about the trachea in which generally non ciliated epithelium are present and they generally provide the protection so according to the discussion pseudo stratified epithelium lines that generally provide the protective purpose not because of the cilia that are present in the large glands or ducts in name as a trachea and the male urethra so this is the question second from the structural organization in animals let's move to the next question that is schwann cells are present on which part of a of a neuron a dendrites b exon hillock c exon and d soma or body when we discuss about the when we discuss about the schwann cells first of all we discuss about what is schwann cells when we discuss in starting about the schwann the neurolemma cells the neurolemma cells that generally consist of tubular sheath cells 
tubular sheath cells and these tubular sheath cells is also known as Schwann's cells these Schwann cells now what are the various functions that generally opted by the Schwann cells they generally help to first produce the myelin sheath they help to produce the myelin sheath around the myelin sheath around the neurexis that is exon of neuron the basic function of schwann cell is they generally help to provide the myelin sheets what is the role of myelin sheet they generally cover around the neuroaxis neuroaxis is exon of neuron apart from that the next is they help in the schwann cell will help in formation of exon sheath exon sheath the plasma membrane the plasma membrane of the plasma membrane of schwann cells apart for the production of myelin sheath and the formation of exon sheaths the schwann cell plasma membrane cells plasma membrane extends extends as a double layer extends uh, extends as double layer that generally wrapped these layer are wrapped around the around the exon they generally extends and protect and converted into the double layer and these double layer are wrapped around the exon many times and at the end the membrane the membrane fuse the various membrane for example we discuss here the double layer that generally wrapped around the exon many times the many times will make a layer that membrane and the layer fused to form the myelin sheath to form the myelin sheath so according to the discussion the right answer for the question is exon why exon because schwann cell is dedicated in focus for the production of myelin sheath that myelin sheath is all together focused for protection and the layering around the neural axis that is exon of neuron so according to the discussion the right answer for the question is exon exon because schwann cells are present on which part of a neuron that is exon because in exon they generally help by providing the myelin sheath let's discuss the next question the next question is haversian canal is option a found in all the bones b found only in long human bones c found in elementary canal and d none of these when we discuss about haversian canal for example first is in mammalian bones when we discuss about these canals first we discuss about the mammalian bones in mammalian bones matrix that are present in the bones are arranged are arranged in fine concentric fine concentric rings fine concentric rings and lamellae in mammalian bones there is a presence of a matrix and these matrix are arranged in fine concentric rings or the lamellae these concentric rings and lamellae generally known as a haversian canal 
This is known as a Havarsian canal. These Havarsian canals generally contain blood vessels, contain blood vessels, lymphatics, lymphatics and last is nerves. They generally contain the blood vessels, lymphatics and the nerves. All these together form the, including the blood vessels, when Havasian canal along or joining with the blood vessels, lymphatics and the nerves, they form the Havasian system. In Havasian system, we discuss about the two things. First is the Hervasian canal and second one is when Hervasian canal join with the blood vessel, lymphatics and the nerves, they will form the Hervasian system. Now what are the main function? They generally help in transportation of, they generally help in transportation of nutrients and nutrients and oxygen oxygen through blood the main role played by the hervasian system is help in the transportation of the various kinds of the nutrients and oxygen through the blood now where it is present it is present only in hervasian system in canal present only in long compact bones long compact bones and these are absent in these are generally absent in spongy bones these are absent in spongy bones now hervasian system help in the transportation of nutrients and oxygen and next they are present in the long compact bones and absent in the spongy bones so along with the question we discuss about the two types of a bone first is a compact bone and another is a spongy bones Havasian tissue and canal which focus for the transportation of nutrients and oxygen are present in compact bones only not in the spongy bones so according to the discussion, the right answer for the question is, the right answer for the question is long compact bones. Long compact bones in which there is a generally presence of a Hervasian canal. Hervasian canal when joined with the blood vessels, lymphatics and the nerves, then only it is known as a Hervasian system. Along with the addition of Hervasian canal with the all kinds of blood vessels, lymphatics and nerves, it means Hervasian uh, system, they generally help in transportation of nutrients and oxygen. So according to the discussion, the right answer in the question is option B that is found only in the long human bones and that bones are generally compact. Because according to the discussion, we discussed that in the spongy, they are not present of the Hervasian or absence of Hervasian canal. Hervasian canal is present only in the compact bone. So either mention the compact is the right one in this case. 